Thanks very much for coming. You're welcome. Nice to have you with us, especially since I understand you're going through a bit of a hard time right now, a little bit of controversy about your children's book, Mr. Chaz and Lisa Sue Meet the Pandas. What's going on? Um, well, I, I've heard from uh, a great number of panda experts. Um, you're probably surprised, as I was, to discover there are a great number of panda experts. <laughs> um, and uh, they have taken issue. I actually um, ch chose pandas at random. Just you know. as a fun animal to frolic right. with the children. Right. Sure. They, they occurred to me for no reason. I know so little about the natural world that I had no idea that they were even from China. <laughs> you didn't know pandas were from China? No. Even I know that. Uh, All right. Well, I didn't know they were from China. I didn't know they were rare. I mean, you could easily have convinced me that the lawns of Greenwich were filled with cavorting pandas. <laughs> um, it could have been squirrels. I uh -huh. thought of pandas. And um, I started getting letters uh, when the hard hardcover came out. Well, wait, what are these panda experts mad about? What, what, what have you done to these pandas They in feel the book? that I have misrepresented the panda. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I've actually gotten letters that say, pandas don't eat pizza. Really? Pandas eat bamboo, which in fact is why they're rare. <laughs> um, because there are apparently fewer and fewer bamboo trees. Do, okay, and that's why there are no pandas. That is right. So clearly they should eat pizza. <laughs> <laughs> we should send them pizzas. Yeah, definitely. So, um, these pandas talk. So I was obviously <laughs> which not is trying another to pull the wool over the eyes of the American public. <laughs> <laughs> And, I, uh -huh. you know, um, I once um, wrote um, a piece for Newsweek about uh -huh. teenagers and w where I made a disparaging remark about guidance counselors. And I heard from about 80 million guidance counselors. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there's really an equation to be made here. I mean, considering the fact that we need none, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that there are 80 million guidance counselors uh -huh. and an equal number of panda experts, <laughs> who I feel actually have been the students of these guidance counselors. <laughs> <laughs> It's causing a lot of trouble. Okay. Yeah. So what are you going to do? I mean, have you learned a lesson next time? Will you research the animal that... Uh... No. <laughs> you no, don't I, care. No, I, I actually... Um, offending panda experts really just rolls right off my back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not running for anything. I don't mm -hmm. have to appease the panda expert faction. I see. I don't know how you sleep at night. It's, um, I don't. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, I understand uh, in a similar vein, you've been working on the same novel now for quite a long time. It's probably since you were born. Really? I feel it's important. 1978. <laughs> um, well, actually, not much after that. I feel that it is important in this changing world to have something stay the same. And so I've p clearly chosen this book to be the s thing in my life that's the constant. That's the constant. That Literally, how can you work on a novel? It's, it's how close to completion are you on this thing now? That's really hard to tell. It depends on how much distraction there is. I mean, I could spend months on the Panda Experts, so. Um, <laughs> I'm, I would say that um, I'm, getting, uh -huh. uh, I'm getting toward the middle. Okay. And you've been getting, uh, so, so this is literally years and years you've been working on the same? No, I haven't been working on it for years and years. It's just been due for years and years. Okay. You know, being a writer is just very much like being a high school student without, of course, the fun. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's like always having a term paper due. The yeah. only problem is you can't do it the night before it's due. I know that since I've tried it twice. Uh, <laughs> so, so it's just Beautiful. that I have poor working habits. Uh huh. I understand. Well, well, you've done both now. You've you've been writing real adult books, not real adult books. I shouldn't say that. You've been writing adult books, and you've been writing children's book. What what, what is easier to do? Um, children's books. Really? Yes. Why is that? Um, well, they're easier to fool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we like them, isn't uh -huh. it? Uh-huh. Um, it's just easier because um, I'm childish, I guess. It's easier. There are fewer words. Okay. Um, it, the whole thing is much less complicated, and there are pictures that take up a lot of the space. <laughs> so what happens, when, what happens when you go on TV shows, say, like this one, and you say writing children's books is, is easy? Easier. Easier. Do, do children's book authors now get mad? You're going to get letters from them? Yes. You will. Yes. I've you gotten letters You've offended from them. them now. Yes. But they write in crayon on sure cardboard, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's not that threatening. It's not a threatening thing. No. Now, we talked about this the last time you were on, but uh, you don't like, and y you admit to this, you cop to this, you don't, you don't like having people around, do you? You really don't not like. Not in my own home, no. <laughs> you don't like having people in your home. That's correct. Okay. That's well, correct. That's what home means. Home means yes. the absence of anyone but me. That's right. Okay. That's, that's why I call it Fran Land. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Fran 
Thailand, there's just not room for others. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that this apartment that I have now, um, uh -huh. I uh, tore out two bedrooms. Um, Why? Because uh, they would be thought of by others as guest rooms. <laughs> That's and pretty extreme to actually rip out guest rooms on the odd chance that someone might misconstrue it as a place to hang out. It's not an odd chance. If you live in New York and you have a guest room, you have a guest. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I mean, it's not like you live, you know, someplace out of the way. I mean, <laughs> uh -huh. it's not like you could freely say to people, if you ever happen to be in New York, you can stay with me. It's, mm -hmm. it's gonna happen. Every airline goes through that's New right. York. Through my apartment, actually. Now, what about, does this, does this extend to, to family as well? Or um, particularly yes. to family. Uh, no, no, as my mother stayed with me once. My, my parents live in New Jersey, so mm -hmm. they, there's not really necessary for them to stay overnight. But on this occasion, my mother wanted to stay in New York for the weekend, so I allowed it since I thought, you know, she's my mother. I have only one who wants to start a trend. <laughs> you know, people want to say, I'm also your mother. I can stay here. So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my, my mother is allowed to stay there. And did that went well? You, you could share the same space and it was okay? Well, I slept on the sofa. No. Oh. You know, so it was okay. There you go. For my mother. <laughs> Who is now, wh now, what about in just in life, walking down the street? Do you interact well with people outside your apartment? Then are you perfectly happy to see people? No, I'm not perfectly happy to see them. <laughs> but um, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, I'm not in control of them. So. Okay. Uh, although they feel they're in control of you, you know, they make all these rules, but um, I, try, I ignore them. Okay. This is a nice attitude you've got going. <laughs> yes. Well, Very it works. Very warm and fuzzy. Yes, well, it works for me. My mood hair is changing as we speak. <laughs> I feel very threatened by this whole thing. Now, hi there. The, um, how do you feel? I, you're also a, a bit of a, you have a fear, I don't know what the technical term is, a fear of technology, or you don't trust technology, or you don't like technology? I would say a distaste for technology. Okay. A contempt. Contempt? Yes. All right. Th that's, now, that's the other side of fear. How does this manifest itself? I mean, uh, I don't know how to work anything. If it, if, if, if it's so invented, like a chair you can handle. This you're doing fine. If it was invented after my childhood, which was the last time I learned anything, um, I can't work it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just don't have any modern things. In my well, what process. about you're a writer? Do you work on a word processor or a computer? No, I write with a pen. Okay. How about a, but like a nice pen, like a fancy pen? Um, no, I, I write with a pen um, that is called a Bic Click, which is an old-fashioned. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's an old-fashioned um, ballpoint <coughs> pen. They're very hard to find, uh -huh. so I mentioned the brand name in case anyone would like to send me some. Okay. Uh, um, you know, you press down the thing. You know, they I'm familiar with that concept, and you can handle that. I press down on this That's button, right. and the and point emerges. Out. Right. As All opposed right. to more modern pens, which you sometimes have to turn, and they're too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so if you sat down to write, and there was a turning pen there, would you freak out and I run out of an your empty apartment? An excellent excuse to not write for a few weeks. <laughs> All right, uh, boy, where are you going to end up, I guess, is the good question. I mean, it, 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 where is this lead, where do you see yourself going, say, if, if, uh, if, if technology just keeps encroaching on us? I mean, it's getting harder and harder to avoid. More and more people are using, on, you know, are online with computers, and it's becoming such a part of life. Aren't you going to just have to flee the country at some point? <laughs> Live in Greenland or something with your big click or whatever it's called? And they probably have it there, too. <laughs> You know. Okay, a panda will sell it to you That's on the right. street. Yeah. I mean, the, the more things they invent and the less I know gives me less in common with other people and they're less likely to want to be guests. <laughs> That's what I like. It's a beautiful theory. I love it. <laughs> All right, well, my thanks to uh, Fran Leibowitz for, for sharing your philosophy with us. Very refreshing. The book is Mr. Chaz and Lisa Sue Meet the Pandas. It's now in paperback. Go out, but don't buy the stuff about the pandas, right? We should warn the children at home they don't eat pizza. Buy it, but don't believe it. <laughs> okay. Brand <laughs> Leibowitz, thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs>